All right, so in chapter 14, we're going to start uh, with a discussion of obligations of the buyer and the seller, and then also remedies uh, of either when the um, when there is a breach. All right. Uh, so in contracts for the sale of goods, now we, we do assume that we're talking about the sale of goods for currency, for cash. Um, uh, I stated at the beginning of uh, chapter 13 that it, we could also have a transaction where we have uh, good for good exchanges that fall under the UCC, right? Um, and and in that case, uh, we have you know we would have uh, two sellers essentially, um, but they're really two buyers as well. Just the price is uh, in in goods or in kind. Okay. Let's talk about the obligations of the seller. So the seller's basic responsibility to deliver goods that conform to the agreement in every way. All right. So if I con contract to deliver 500 fryer chickens uh, from my poultry farm to your restaurant at Friday before noon or on Friday before noon, then that's what I've done. I've delivered the number of chickens in the time frame required at the place required. So that's the seller's responsibility. And it seems basic, right, to do exactly what they agreed to do. All right. Um, and it is basic when the agreement specifically spells out what's required. All right. But if buyer and seller haven't agreed upon delivery terms. Well, uh, tender of delivery takes place at a reasonable hour in a reasonable manner. All right. So if I'm delivering 500 chickens, right? Um, or even if I'm not delivering, if, if you want, if, if the contract calls that you pick up the chickens, right? That means you should be able to pick them up during business hours in a reasonable manner. And the manner usually relates to the, the lot size. So, and this is a preposterous example, but if I'm selling 500 chickens, I can't require that you pick them up uh, 10 at a time from 10 different poultry farmers that I own. That That wouldn't be reasonable, right? That would be burdensome to the buyer of the chickens all right um, there are two types of contracts uh, shipment contracts which essentially require that the seller uh, hiring uh, hire a uh, shipper to deliver the goods all right um, and when this is the case, the seller must also give notice uh, that the goods have been shipped. All right. Uh, destination contracts mean that the goods are available at a certain place for a period of time, for a reasonable period of time. All right. And the seller has to make these goods available uh, for at that place for a reasonable period of time. All right. Perfect tender rule. And you may have discussed this in 2080. Um, we're more interested in what happens when the seller does not perfectly tender. Gives the buyer options. All right. And they are three. In the example that I gave just a few moments ago. Let's let's stick with poultry farmer has contracted to deliver 500 chickens to restaurant. All right, before noon on Friday. Poultry farmer shows up at 1 p.m. on Friday. 
All right. Restaurant owner has three choices. All right. You know what? We contracted for uh, the chickens to be here at 12. You're here at 1. I'm going to accept all 500 chickens anyway. So that's option one. Except despite the breach. Option two. Right. We contracted for 500 chickens to be here at noon. You're here at one. You take your stinking chickens and you leave. Right. That's rejecting the entirety of the performance. And restaurant would be well within their rights to do that. Perhaps not the most prudent business move, but legally sound. All right. And the third option. Accept in part and reject in part. Restaurant owner says, okay, I need chickens to get through this weekend. I'm going to accept 200 chickens, right? Uh, but I also need a reliable poultry farmer. So you can take your other 300 chickens and I'm going to find a new business partner. So that's acceptance in part, rejection in part, all right? Um, and you can reject any commercial unit. So in that particular transaction, the commercial unit would be the chicken. Obviously, if you accept in part, uh, the buyer is going to be obligated to pay for what they've accepted and not pay for what they re have rejected. All right. Um, and it has to be a commercial unit. So in this case, the commercial unit is the chicken. I couldn't say, I'll take the drumsticks off of all 500 of your chickens and you can keep the rest. That wouldn't be feasible. All right. Um, okay. Exceptions to the perfect tender rule. Parties can always agree to modify their contractual obligations. All right. Sticking with the same example. Poultry farmer says, I'm running late with your 500 chickens. Can I deliver them by 1 p.m. on Friday? Restaurant owner says, sure. That's agreement. All right. Uh, and then by agreeing, restaurant owner waives the right to treat that as a breach which mean, mean, means that restaurant owner, he or she, could not reject the entirety or accept in part or reject in part, right? If you agree to it, then you, you've agreed to it, right? You've waived the right to reject. Cure, all right? When the goods do not conform, the seller has time. Well, let, let me say it this way. When the seller delivers non-conforming goods and there is still time for performance under the contract, uh, the seller has the right to deliver conforming goods before the time for uh, performance is expired. All right, so we'll, we'll stick with, um, well, let's change the example a bit. Um, Bob's grocery store orders uh, 15 bushels of white corn from Corey's Corn Farm. All right, Corey's delivers 15 bushels of yellow corn. Well, that's a defective performance, right? Um, and let's say that the initial contract called for delivery by Friday and the yellow corn was delivered on Thursday. Well, Corey has the opportunity to deliver the white corn initially ordered 
by Friday, assuming Bob timely tells, timely rejects and says this is the wrong kind of corn. You know, nobody wants this yellow corn. I ordered white. All right. So Corey would have the opportunity to deliver to deliver what Bob ordered uh, because there's still time for performance. And if Corey is able to do so, there is no breach. Right. Bob's grocery store cannot hold Corey liable for any damages because they have cured. They did everything the contract required in the time frame required. All right. So that's a cure. One additional wrinkle we'll add to that. And let's change the example up a bit. So um, in the example, Corey delivered white corn on Thursday for a con. Corey delivered yellow corn on Thursday for a contract that required white corn on Friday. Well, let's say the yellow corn is delivered on Friday, but Corey reasonably believed that um, Bob's grocery store would accept the corn uh, as an accommodation and it wouldn't be a major issue. In that case, Corey would have a reasonable amount of time even after the deadline on Friday to get the white corn that Bob ordered because it's reasonable to believe that uh, if you order 15 bushels of yellow corn, of white corn, that yellow corn is probably going to be suitable for your needs, right? In other, so in other words, it, when, it, when a reasonable person would have found that to be acceptable, uh, you have a reasonable amount of time after the the time for performance in the contract has lapsed. All right. Substitution of carriers, right, is, is typically OK, assuming there's a reason. Uh, the example in the text similar uh, is that UPS goes on strike, so I use FedEx. All right. Um, that's typically going to be okay. Installment contracts. All right. and, and really the idea here is that if the deformity or defect in a particular installment is so uh, pervasive that it substantially reduces the value of the whole contract, it calls into question the ability of the buyer to deliver what they promised, then you can reject the entire performance. But if the defect doesn't rise to that level, you're going to be limited to rejecting the individual installments. All right. Uh, that's how that works. And the text, I don't think, did a great job of describing that. So, but that's how the installment contract works. To, to um, reject the entirety of an installment contract, the defect or deformity in a particular installment has to be so substantial that it calls into question the ability of the seller to meet the contractual obligations. Commercial impracticability. These are unforeseen events that typically make performance substantially more expensive or more complicated. All right. In these cases, typically the seller is excused from performance. Buyer would be excused from payment. Destruction of goods after identification. Right. Identification is a process by which 
the buyer's particular goods are set aside either on the seller's place of business tendered to a common carrier i.e. UPS, FedEx are otherwise separated from the rest of the seller's inventory so if that happens and the goods are destroyed uh, that excuses the seller from performance all right and assurance and cooperation this is similar to anticipatory repudiation when the seller has some doubt uh, it could be from external factors or communication from the buyer that the buyer may not be able to pay for the goods um, the seller can request assurances that they are in fact solvent i.e. able to pay for the goods or cooperation this may mean modification in um, payment terms right if I know that you filed for bankruptcy I may only do business with you on a cash basis I'm not going to grant you credit so uh, if we had a contract that it had credit terms I may need your cooperation in modifying that term so that's how assurance and cooperation works Again, just a visual representation of what we've just discussed. Um, and and I, I just like the visual, so I put it in the slides. We've already discussed all of this. So um, that's it for this particular lecture.